Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, right now, we're going to have a time of prayer. So um, let's get ready and we'll bow our heads. Jesus, we just thank you and praise you. And just welcome you here this morning. We thank you for a chance to worship and give you praise. Uh, may we continue to just lift up our church body to you, Lord. May you continue to work uh, in our lives, Lord. Uh, help us to continue to pray for uh, Mr. Bill and just watch that you continue to watch over him and uh, his health. I pray that you'll continue to strengthen him each day and that you continue to uh, help Give strength to Gloria and Dale and, and Karen as they, they care for him. And, and uh, that you just really continue to bless the time that they have with, with Mr. Bill. And that he can just really feel your presence each and every day. Lord. We just continue to lift up um, just those who, who have been sick and who are maybe not feeling well. Uh, we just ask that you continue to work and uh, heal them. Lord, uh, we pray that you'll continue to um, just really be glorified. In, in, in our lives, Lord, and in what, you, what you're doing. Um, Jesus, I also ask that you help us to encourage one another, to, uh, to really spur each other on to continue to walk uh, with you, and uh, Lord, to really come together as a body, uh, as really seeking after you and, and wanting to give you our best and our all, Lord. Uh, to think about others and to love others as you call us to love. We just thank you. Again, thank you for this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, this morning we're going to be talking about um, what is true. And we're going to be looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Um, as kind of what I usually do when we talk about um, messages, is to really think about Acts 17 11. Um, that's one of my verses that always sticks in my heart because it's that, it's that idea that, you know, we search the scriptures. Right, we continue to follow and do our research, right, to be able to discern the lies from the truth. So I encourage you guys, be Bereans, right? Be people who listen to messages, listen to the word, and really search it out. Okay, so I encourage you guys to think about those things as we do as we go into uh, the message today. So now that I'm over fifty. Um, I can say, right, back in the old days, um, you know, truth was absolute, right? When we were growing up, there wasn't a lot of gray area, right? Truth was pretty black and white. Um, but over the past 50 years, I think there's been a shift in our culture, right? Now the truth in our culture tends to be relative. Um, what is true for me isn't necessarily true for you, right? And you've heard the saying, Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Now it's more like truth is in the eye of the beholder. Um, and as a Christian, right, how does that affect us? We're living in some unprecedented times. We're living in times that it's harder to sort out the truth because there's so much information out there. Um, it's times where the news just doesn't seem as reliable and as trustworthy as it used to be. And it seems like everybody seems to have an agenda, right? Everybody's pushing something, um, whether it's what they want us to think, right? what, we, what they want us to buy, um, what they want us to be passionate about. Right? There's a definite push. Um, but if you're a Christian and we believe that the Bible is true, right, the authentic word of God, then truth is absolute. that the word of God is our absolute truth. There's no arguments, right? There's no reasoning it out. There's no thinking and justifying our thinking, right? And we can't pick and choose and say, well, I believe this is true, but I believe this isn't, this doesn't pertain to us or this doesn't pertain to me now. And we can't do that, right? If the truth is absolute and, and God's word is the truth, that's the way we need to be living. And I've shared it before when I shared in the past. You know, we talk about our lives as separate category. Well, there's my work life, and I act this way, and I behave this way. 
oh, and then there's family and family, you know, it's family's harder. So I, I treat them a little differently. And then there's my friends and my friends, you know, we, we just hang out, we can have fun things. Um, but we can't live that way, right? Jesus challenges us to see the life and life in him and everything together. That the truth that we hold, it permeates every category of our lives. Right? It can't just be, oh, this is my church life and the Bible only pertains to when I'm hanging out with Christians. You know? It doesn't work that way. Right? But this truth that we have in our hands covers everything about us. You know, and I hear, you know, you hear a lot about issues going on, right? You hear a lot about, um, you know, how do you respond to different issues? How do you respond to abortion? Right? How do we respond to homosexuality? How do we respond to dating and marriage? Um, you know, how do we respond to the craziness of these times? You know, and my encouragement is always, you know what? What does the Word of God say? Right? What does our Bibles tell us? Because as we spend the time reading, right, as we spend the time being in his presence, as we're praying, you know, it's that reminder that we're getting to know him. You know, we're getting to know his character and who he is. Um, you know, and as we get to know him, we'll know how to respond in these different situations. You know, as hard as it, it is. You know, and I know it's hard. Um, I tell my Sunday school class, because I'm, I'm teaching Sunday school high school, and I tell them, almost every week. I know it's hard because, you know, again, back in the old days, right, we didn't face the pressures you guys did. Right? We didn't face having to deal with the things that are in your face and, and that you're, you're dealing with right now. But I think, you know, we tend to think we're more complex now than, than we used to be. Um, you know, we think Everything should make sense to us. You know, when I read this, it should make sense to me. You know, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. You know, and I used, to, I used to read that when I was younger and think, Oh, that just meant, oh, when I do my decisions, or when I'm, you know, whatever I'm doing. You know, it, it never really dawned on me that, I'm leaning on his understanding when I'm reading on his word. When I'm reading his word, you know, sometimes, yeah, it's not going to make sense. Um, you know, Jen and I are reading through the Bible right now, and it's funny because it's like you read stuff and you're like, what in the world? Like, why is that a thing? Like, why is this in the Bible? And I question it because I don't understand it. But going back to that verse, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. It's not about me and what I think. But it's learning God's character. And as you see God's character, these things that you read, it doesn't make sense. They come to make, it makes more sense. Um, you know? So it's important for us to be able to lean on, on his understanding as we read the word. So, so before we get into 2 Timothy 2, uh, let's pray over the message and we'll get going. Uh, Jesus, we thank you again for this time. We thank you for your word and how it shows us um, not only how to live, but it shows us more about who you are and why you are so worthy of praise. I pray that you'll speak to our hearts today and help us to just um, be softened to hear your, your voice and your word. And that, like you said, it, some of it may not we, we may not understand now, but we trust in you, we trust in our whole heart, that you will make it revealed to us um, when the time comes. So we thank you and trust you. I pray that your, your words will just come forth today. In Jesus' name, amen. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. And it says, Remember Christ Jesus, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign in him. 
If we deny him, he will also reign in, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot deny himself. We might remind them of these things and charge them before God, not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth, but avoid irrelevant babble, for it will lead to lead people into more and more ungodliness. And it's that reminder that, you know what, in the second letter to Timothy, right, Paul's writing to somebody who is his adopted son uh, in faith um, during his second imprisonment with Rome. And he's waiting, basically he's waiting his time to go see Nero, which ultimately is going to lead him into his martyr, martyrdom. Um, but he is encouraging Timothy to stand strong in his faith. I think at that point, he had heard some grumblings about Timothy kind of wavering, right? not being sure of you know, his faith and, and what he was doing. Timothy was um, pastoring a church, so he must have been in his late 20s or 30s at this point. He was pastoring a church in Ephesus, and um, so Paul's just encouraging him. Right? So in the couple chapters before, right, he, Paul's encouraging Timothy to stir up the gifts that God has given him. You know, to stand strong in the doctrine and teach the teaching that he's received, to be strong in the grace given to him by the Lord Jesus. And at this point, Paul is continuing to encourage Timothy in the, the work that he's doing. Verse 8, Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Again, Timothy, probably a young man, early 20s, or late 20s, early 30s, pastoring, um, and just encouraging, hey, press on. Like, keep doing what you're doing. Um, use the gifts that God's given. Right? To not forget who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Right? That he's risen from the dead, that he is from the line of King David, right? The same gospel that they preached then is the same one we preach now. Um, and to remember that, you know what, Paul was bound up at this point, right? He was thrown in prison. He wasn't thrown in prison because he stole something. He wasn't in prison because he murdered somebody. He was in prison because of the gospel. But he's telling Timothy, hey, even then, right, even though I'm, I'm in prison and I'm in chains, the word of God is not bound. It still goes forth in power. And in verse 10, Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain salvation, that is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. Paul goes on to even say, you know, he even endures the prison knowing that it's for the sake of the gospel. It's for the sake of those who have received Jesus as their Savior. And it's important to know, you know, that's what Paul is about, sharing the gospel. And that's kind of what, you know, the Bible tells us, right, in Matthew 28, right? Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Right? That's what he's calling us to do. And I know it's hard because I don't like, I don't like sharing in public. I don't like sharing, you know, and, and reaching that subject at times. Um, but I was telling Jen the other night... <laughs> I, I don't know if it's because I'm older now, but I'm starting not to care like what people say anymore or what people think. You know, I, I definitely feel more empowered and more bold now because I'm kind of like, you know, people need to know, right? Um, guys I play basketball with every Monday, there's about, I don't know, 15 guys who play basketball still. Half of those guys are non-Christians, you know? And it, the funny thing is, it's a bunch of Christian guys who started it, and then we just invited guys, you know, randomly. And um, it's just neat to see. I, I, I see that God has opened up a door for me. And the one thing we do is we pray every time we, before we play. And it's funny because it's like, you know, we're getting together. It's like, I don't know, six, six non-Christian guys 
sitting there, and I have to look at him and say, okay, let's pray. You know, and it's just funny. Right? But I'm learning that God's giving me an opportunity to share the gospel. You know, so I told those guys, hey, if you want to know about Jesus, because we have a text thread, you know, checking in, see who's coming. I told those guys, hey, you guys have my number. If you want to know more about Jesus, text me. You know, go have coffee. You know, we'll, we'll go hang out. But I feel like the older I'm getting, the more I'm like, the gospel has to go forth. Right? We need to be more bold. You know, and, and holding the truth and not sharing it is just something that I don't want to stand before Jesus and say, I, I, I was too scared. You know, I was scared of what they were going to say about me. Does it really matter what they're going to say about me? You know, a lot of those guys I look at and I'm like, you know what? I know them now enough that we've played for played for about three or four years now you know they know who I am you know they don't I'm not judgy on them and I'm not like pointing out their flaws you know but I can honestly tell them hey because I care I want to share this this truth with you and that's kind of what you know Paul's trying to do with Timothy hey don't forget your, your, your first love right? continue to go with the gospel continue to preach it Verse 11, the saying is trustworthy, or if we have died with him, we also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And during this church time, right, there's a bunch of sayings that were going around. Uh, kind of a short reminder of the gospel. Right? He's telling them, hey, Kind of what he, Paul had encouraged Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. And it says, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, who I am the, of the foremost. Right? And it's the reminder that Jesus is the only way, you know, the truth and the, and the life. Um, Acts 4, verse 12. And there's no salvation in, there, there, uh, and there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Right? There isn't another option. Right? There's a lot of a there's a big push, right, for, for religion to start becoming more of a one world religion, right? Accepting. We need to be accepting of everybody. Oh, you know, Islam, you know, they're they're, they're good people, you know. Um, I can't think of anything else right now. Buddhists, you know, Buddhist people are good. They're good people. You know, all God, all the roads lead to heaven. You know what? This is not what the Bible tells us, right? The Bible tells us, hey, there's only one way. Right? It's only through Jesus. And that's what we need to be, be reminded of. Because in this, this culture, they're telling you, hey, everything's relative. Everything's okay. Everything comes together. You know the one religion that doesn't? Christianity. Jesus is the only one that stands against that. And that's what he tells us in his word. Uh, let's go on to verse 14, chapter 2, verse 14. Remind them of these things and charge them before God, not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. And Paul, again, is encouraging Timothy to remind the church it's not about fighting and dividing over things, over false teachers or with people who aren't really interested in hearing the gospel. You know, there's a lot of people that I know that like to argue just because they like to argue, right? Because they want to prove their point. And that's kind of what Paul's telling them. It's like, hey, when you recognize those people and you run into them, don't waste the words, right? In some sense, it's, not, it's pointless because all they want to do is debate. All they want to do is say, well, you know, well, you know, this is wrong in the Bible, and that's wrong in the Bible. It's like, yeah, that may be true. You, you may see it that way, you know. But what it comes down to is your heart, you know. Where is Jesus calling you? you know, what Are you recognizing, hey, that I'm a sinner that needs a Savior, and it's only Jesus that saves? And again, this is why I think it's so important that we know our word, right? We know the Bible, that we are able to discern things of the world so yeah if we run into people who are 
following false teachers. We know. As soon as they start saying something, it's like, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense with what the Bible says. Um, and we'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, look at Psalm 119, verses 97 to 105. Psalm 119, verse 97 to 105. And it says, this is David writing. It says, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from, in, from evil in every way in order to keep your word. I do not turn aside from your rules, for you have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And as I read this psalm, I'm like, man. That's who I want to be. I want to be like David. God calls him a man after his own heart. You know, and I want to have that heart of David, like David. Right? That he the loves and delights in the word and the law. Right? That he thinks about it, that he ponders about it, that it runs through his head all day. You know, when we talk about all the social media nowadays, right? All the things that, that bombard you now. How much are we really spending in his word? Myself included. You know, I'm totally guilty of that. Where I don't spend nearly as much the amount of time in the word that I do on my phone. And that's just the reality of things right now. But it's a challenge to me daily to remember, hey, this is the most important thing. You know? I put my phone right there. <laughs> I was gonna pull it up. Uh, but you know, people walk around like this is the most important thing in, in the world. It's like, no, your phone is not your most important gift. This is your most important. Because right? I want to be somebody who ponders on it you know, all day long. To think about the word of God. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. This is one of my favorite passages. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, present yourselves, as, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that testing you may discern what the will of God is, what, the will, what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And that's how our mind is going to be renewed. Our mind is renewed by reading the word. Right? That he changes it. That he's working. You know, Because I'm left on my own, on my own strength, I can't do it. I struggle. You know? I can't do things the way he wants to if I'm not in his word, if I'm not having him transform me each and every day. Um, I think the big joke in our house is that if, if I read the word as much as I've watched baseball, you know, my life would be totally different. I'm totally, I would know the word so much better, right? Um, and that's one of the challenges I struggle with sometimes is I, I know I need to be in the Word. I know I need to be reading it. I know I need to spend time. You know, and it's a struggle in the flesh. You know? So I'm right there with you guys. You know, I, I struggle too. Um, but I want to encourage us. You know, you can you can keep me accountable. I'll say, hey, have you been spending time in your Word? or You've been watching the Yankees. You know? So you can definitely ask me that. Um, and it's awesome because, like David said, right, as we study the word, he gives us wisdom beyond anything here on earth, right? Think of you guys in college, right? Verse 99, more understanding than your worldly teachers, right? Professors with PhDs. Right? I know a lot of people tend to honor those who have PhDs and to think more highly of themselves, you know, like, oh, they have a PhD. They're like the most brilliant person. But you know what? If they don't know his word, 
What does that knowledge do? Nothing, right? I mean, we. I work at a university, right? <laughs> I'm around PhDs all the time, you know? And I show them respect. But if they were non-Christians, if they didn't know the word, then it's kind of like, yeah, their knowledge doesn't mean anything. You know? But it's knowing that his word is going to give us knowledge greater than that. So it's important for us to just spend that time and cut out things that are going to make us stumble. You know, Stop watching shows that may pull you in a certain direction. Stop listening to music that pulls you in a certain direction. You know, I've shared with college and I think I shared with my high school class. You know, I love music, but if I listen to certain music, right, it makes me, in a, it makes me my attitude more edgy, right? And so I get less patient with people. You know, I get angrier when I drive, when I'm listening to certain music. You know? So don't tell me, oh, it doesn't affect me. Music affects you more than you think. So if that's the case, I need to cut it out, right? I need to stop and really meditate and praise his name and to listen to worship music, right? To meditate on his word. Right? And again, as David did, he pondered, meditated, he gained wisdom. He was wiser than his enemies, right? Greater than his teachers. You know, he had to follow Jesus up until the point. And as we stay in his word, and as we keep on his path that he has for us, we can see how sweet it is. Right? Um, you know, I know many who have gone to church, you know, walked with the Lord for a short time, and then started following the world. Right? And then those who have come back, they always tell me, man, you know, if I would have stayed true to the Lord, if I would have followed Jesus, through those times, I wouldn't have the, the emotional baggage I have. Right? I don't. I wouldn't have the struggles I have. You know that you've carried for years, right? Because if we follow the, the word, He will make our path straight. Right? He will protect us. He will watch over us. He will bless us. And that's not saying, oh, He's going to give you a million dollars and you're going to have this easy life. And far from it, right? But He will walk you through the hard times. Right? He will be with you each and every step you go, no matter how hard things get. You know, and that's where I want to be, right? I want to be in a place where my heart and mind are all for his glory. That it's all about Jesus and less about me. You know. Again, it's, it's going through his word, you can see his character, right? That we can learn more about him and have him shape our lives. You know, instead of us trying to do things on our own. And trying to fix things. Because I know when Jen and I get in a fight and I try to fix it, it, it gets worse, right? It turns into a bigger mess. You know? But when I step back and I'm praying about it and I say, okay, Lord, it's, it's in your hands. It works out much better than what I can do, what I think I should do. You know? Or what I should say. Right? Um, you know, but it's following the Lord, right? Knowing his word. And then verse six, 15 and 16 in Second Timothy. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. But avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness. And this is one of my favorite passages because it's a reminder for me to keep a love for his word, right? to continue to study and get to know God and be his servant. To be equipped, ready to handle his word. You know, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, right? Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Right? So he's telling us, hey, be ready. Right? How can we be ready if we don't know his word? Um, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for you a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Right? 
for us to be prepared, to be ready. We wouldn't go into battle without getting some basic training. Um, in the letter to the Ephesians, right, Paul calls the word of the Lord the sword of the Spirit. Do soldiers go into battle not knowing how to handle their firearm? No, they get trained, right? They do a lot of basic training. I don't know how many months, like six to eight months, right? But it's all training so they can handle the word, right? Or handle their weapon. And the same thing, you know, we need to be trained, right? We need to be ready. We need to be knowing how to ha handle the word of God, right? Because we are in a battle, right? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You know, and we are. We're, we're in a cultural war right now where truth is relevant or relative. You know, it can be anything you want it to be now. But yet the Bible tells us, no, you know, this is the truth. You know, this is the only truth. And we need to know how to handle it. You know, we need to know how to use it. Um, one of my favorite things over the past few years, and I shared last year, was watching the Tour de France. You know, and it's a 21 day, I think like 3,000 miles they, they travel on the bike race. And, uh, you know, I love it. It just fascinates me. Um, but I, I couldn't just grab my bike, go to France, and jump on and say, okay, I'm here. Let's go. I wouldn't last the first day, right? But without any training, without any doing anything, it's ridiculous, right? The same way. It's like, how are we living a Christian life and not training, right? Not knowing the Word of God, not knowing how to, you know, where things are in the Scripture. You know? I wouldn't, I wouldn't train, to, I wouldn't do that to go to the Tour de France. It'd be, it'd be crazy. But yet, the same way, we're not... We need to be in the Word. Right? We need to be training. We need to be reading. Um, and one of the cool things about my high school class that I'm learning is, um, you know, that there maybe you have doubts. Right? Maybe you have questions about things. Questions are fine. Doubts are fine. Right? I think too often we think, oh, I, I don't want to raise, you know, I have this feeling of this doubt. And I just don't want to raise this up. Everybody has doubts. Right? Everybody has questions. Um, but one of the things we need to do is to really search the scripture, right? Get into it. Right? If you have a question, you know, read the word, find it. There's tons of resources out there, right? If you don't know, you can always ask, you know. Ask Pastor Zero. You know, ask me. I might more than likely probably won't have an answer for you, but you know we'll search it out together. Um, but it's important that we're able to be like the Bereans, right? to research it, to understand it, to, to seek it out. And again, I said, like I haven't read all the way through the Bible. We're about almost halfway. And, you know, yeah, there's parts of it that doesn't make sense. There's parts of it that's really dry to me. Um, but I'm excited. You know, I'm excited to be able to walk through it, you know, to finally go through it and see the full counsel, right, to see the big picture of everything. You know, I think too many of us, especially if you've grown up in Sunday school, right, you hear the small little pieces, you know. But to see how the Bible, like, brings all the small pieces together into one picture, and, you know, slowly, like I said, since we're about halfway, I'm starting to see more and more of the picture, you know. And as, you know, we've studied and read and, and been in Bible studies, you know, you get to see more and more of a picture, the bigger picture. So I encourage you guys, you know, to think about those things. To, to, it's okay to, to question, but it's not okay to not seek it out, to not find the answers. As many of you guys know, I've been involved in a lot of youth camps. You know, I did Mount Hermon for Jem's 
a number of years. You know, I used to help out with Gardena Valley Baptist and, and stuff with them. And uh, there is one camp that continues to stick to my stick out in my mind, and that was a true a true blessing. And uh, it was at a high school junior high camp, and there's about like 150 200 uh, students junior high and high school students. You know, we had a worship time, we had a speaker, we had small groups. I was a cabin leader, you know, I led a cabin. But uh, at this camp, I saw a passion for the Word of God that I've never seen anywhere else. And, you know, at this camp, these students had a lot of questions. You know, they wanted to know, you know, what did the Bible say about this? What did the Bible say about that? They had a hunger to know the truth. And amazing as it was, during free time, you know, the free time right at camp is like the golden time, right? It's like, oh, now I can go have fun with my friends. Now I can go swimming or we go play basketball or volleyball or do whatever we wanted to do because it's free time. Um, but at this camp, there was about 30 or so high school, mostly high school, some junior high kids. Um, but they wanted to know what the Bible said about these different issues. And they would sit there for three hours during free time, listening to the Word of God all the way till, till dinner. Right? And it was amazing, you know? And it was funny, too, because, you know, like, even at our church, right, everybody tends to sit in the back, right? The back was, like, where the cool people sit at, at camp. You know, you never wanted to sit in the front. Who sits at the front? All the nerdy people sit in the front. Um, you know? And it's funny because at this camp, we saw kids, high school kids, running in. They wanted to sit right at the front because they wanted to hear the word of God so bad. You know, and it was amazing. It was amazing to watch. These are high school and junior high kids, like crowding the front, you know, wanting to hear the word. And it's it was so awesome because the fruit from those days, you know, I, I still keep in touch with a few of those guys. And I can see how the Lord really used them. You know, there's there some of them are deacons in their church. Some of them are, are serving a college group ministry. Some are doing um, other different ministries, but they're walking with the Lord still. You know, and I think we all look back on that and it's like, yeah, that was an amazing time. You know, just seeing high school and junior high kids just love the Word. And, you know, that's what I hope we, we're going to be like, you know, that we can have such a hunger and a desire to, to hear the word that we would, you know, give up and sacrifice things in our life. Um, you know, like we said, like those kids, you know, you might have questions. Right? Where do you start? Um, what should I read? You know, but just like that camp, I think, you know, sometimes we, we need a forum. Right? We need a place to ask these questions, you know, a place to learn. And that's why it's important. Hey, join a Bible study. You know, start a small group. You know, you don't have to be like Joe, you know, king knowledge person and know everything in a small group. Just call people up and say, hey, let's get together and just, just talk about, you know, I don't know, John chapter one. You know, start there. Um, you know, maybe check in with Pastor Daryl, right? And see. What study? What other studies that we have going on in church? Um, you know, we lead a small group on Friday nights. You know, if you want, if you're interested, let us know. You know, and it's not age specific. So, college young adults, if you want to come, you're more than welcome. You know, but don't just join a group. Right? It's it's corporate Bible study. I think is a huge, huge thing that we need to, to really look at. You know, to step outside our comfort zones, you know, because coming to church on Sundays is good. You, know, you hear the word, but the more you hear it, the more you're in fellowship, the more you're going to grow. Right? And I encourage you guys, you know, start a group. You know, join a Bible study. You know, I grew the most in my life, my spiritual life, when I developed more of a hunger. You know, when I was listening to more sermons, when I was going to Bible studies, you know, like we would go to Calvary Chapel and listen to a Bible study. 
we would hang out. At, I remember in college, we started our own Bible study. It was like a parachurch Bible study. And people would come from all over and, and just hang out and preach the word. Um, you know, and that's my picture of us. You know, I don't want us to see things to look at the Bible and say, well, it's just this old book. You know, it's the word of God. It's the truth. You know? It's the only absolute truth that we have. You know, and I know it's it's daunting, right? It's two thousand pages. It's like, oh my gosh, where would I start reading this thing? You know? Maybe start in John. You know, the book of John was written for us to know that he is God, that Jesus is God. You know, maybe start there. But like I said, if you can't, start a group, join a group, find a group. <laughs> it's important. You know, and I think like core, right? You appreciate having your group right? and having a, a place to come and, and share and encourage each other. You know, and see the friendships that have grown from that. It's important. And it's important for us to see that it's a living word. Right? It's not this ancient book that just sits there and, and you know doesn't change. Right? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I wrote the word wrong. Where it goes. I'm going to check myself so I make sure I say it correctly. Hebrews chapter 4. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword. And piercing as far as the division of the soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Right? It is a living, active thing. Right? That pierces our soul. The more we read it, the more it just really seeps into our soul. You know, it cuts us, right? Because we serve and love a God who is never changing. He is always faithful, always constant, always loving, always graceful. So as he stands true to his word, right, we should honor, honor him in the same way, right, knowing that we're holding on to the truth, right, him holding on to his word as the absolute truth in a, in a changing culture. Let's pray. Uh, Jesus, again, we thank you for your word. Thank you for how it just really works in our hearts, Lord, and how it just really changes us. You know, more importantly, it's a means to get to know you better and to understand and to love you even more. So I pray that you'll help us to really have a hunger and a desire for the Word. Lord, I know it can be hard. You know, it can be a struggle. But I pray that you'll help us maybe even start with just praying to you and just asking the Lord, Build that hunger in my heart. So, for each one here, Lord, I pray that you'll continue to just grow that hunger. You know, that we want to know the truth. That we want to know and that we can stand on your absolute truth in this crazy um, relative world. You know? So just bless us, bless us this, this day. You know, continue to guide us. And um, that you may be glorified in all we do. We thank you in Jesus' name.